In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about the denaturation of proteins. Under this heading, I will be discussing about meaning of denaturation, then agents causing denaturation, then types of denaturation and denaturation of ribonuclease A. So, let us start our discussion with the meaning of denaturation. What is denaturation? Denaturation, it refers to loss of native conformation of proteins with loss of biological function. So, here two conditions are mentioned. One is loss of native conformation of protein and second condition is loss of biological function. So, to call something as a denaturation, this both condition must be fulfilled. Okay. So, now first condition that is what is this loss of native conformation of protein? So, that is loss of secondary, tertiary and quaternary organization of protein. Right? So, let us try to understand this by this simple example. Here as you can see, this is the tertiary structure of protein. Right? Here you can see this secondary structure alpha helix, then this beta pleated sheet and then once again alpha helix is there. And this secondary structure is further folded to give rise to three dimensional functional protein. So, this is a tertiary structure of protein. Now, once it get denatured, what will happen? This uh, tertiary structure as well as secondary structure will be lost. Only primary structure will remain. So, here you can see it is simply a random coils. Okay? So, there is no any secondary structure and no any tertiary structure. So, this is a denatured one. In this second example, you can see this is the quaternary structure. Now, why it is quaternary structure? Because there are two polypeptide chains, right? One is in the red and second one is in the blue conformation, right? So, here again two tertiary structures are combining to make one quaternary structure, right? Now, when this undergoes denaturation, what will happen? First, this both chains will be separated like this and each tertiary structure is lost, okay? So, here you can see there is a loss of quaternary structure, loss of tertiary structure and loss of secondary structure. All three structures are lost. Okay? So, that is why here in the along with quaternary that should be if applicable. If protein has a quaternary structure, then it can get lost. Otherwise, if protein has only tertiary structure, quaternary structure cannot be removed. Right? So, what will happen when there is a loss of the structural organization of protein? There will be a loss of three dimensional structure. Now, here one thing is very important that it is not complete. Okay? It is not necessarily a complete three dimensional structural loss. It may be a partial loss of three dimensional structure. So, this thing is very important. So, loss of three dimensional structure occurs, it may be complete, it may be partial which results into loss of function. right? So, here you can see both the conditions are fulfilled. First is the loss of native conformation and one important thing to remember is it may be a complete or it may be a partial, but this should result into a loss of function. right? So, here I had rewritten same thing, but different words. So, it is not necessary to complete unfolding and randomization of structure. The necessity is there should be a loss of function along with this even partial loss of structure. One more important thing is that peptide bonds are not broken. Peptide bonds are intact in case of denaturation. So, we can say primary structure is not affected in denaturation. Right? So, now we will discuss next about the agents causing denaturation. There can be a two types of agents which can cause denaturation. One is physical agent, second one is the chemical agents. Under the physical agents, heat, ultraviolet light, high pressure and violent shaking can lead to denaturation. Whereas chemical agents, we have organic solvents, for example, alcohol and acetone. If we mix the protein with the alcohol or acetone, it can lead to loss of three dimensional structure that is denaturation. Second one is the detergents. And most common detergent in the biochemical laboratory is the sod sodium dodecyl sulfate and short form is SDS. Then extremes of pH can also lead to denaturation. That means strong acid or strong alkali can also lead to denaturation. Then these two chemical urea and guanidine, guanidine hydrochloride. 
this both chemicals can also causes the denaturation now out of all this denaturing agent this heat is the most important and most interesting one so next we will discuss about the heat as a denaturation agent so heat and that too approximately around the 60 degree celsius it affects weak interactions in the protein now we know there there are so many weak interactions occur during secondary tertiary and quaternary structure this may be hydrogen bonds hydrophobic interactions electrostatic interactions van der waals forces right but out of all these weak interactions heat mainly affects hydrogen bonds okay now to study the effect of heat on the protein denaturation i had drawn one diagram one graph over here see over here on this x axis there is a temperature is mentioned and on the y axis it is the percentage of denaturation right so here temperature scale is from 0 to infinity and denaturation scale is 0 to 100% okay here 0% denaturation means protein is fully functional and fully folded over here whereas 100% denaturation means complete loss of structure as well as complete loss of function right so here what we want to see is when we are slowly increasing the temperature what happens up to certain point for example up to this point there is no any denaturation is occurring but once we reach up to this certain point there is a abrupt loss of structure occurs so within a short span of temperature complete loss of structure occurs of the protein right so this abruptness gives this graph a sigmoid shape it is a english alphabet s like structure okay or we can also call it as a sigmoidal shape curve which indicates the abruptness in the denaturation now what does this abruptness suggest this abruptness it suggests that unfolding is a cooperative process now what what is the meaning of cooperative process here see at this temperature let's say this is the 55 degree celsius so it at this temperature only a minor portion of the protein is getting denatured let's say this may be a 2% or 3% but this part which is out of this larger protein very small part is destabilized right but this destabilized part it helps other properly conformated protein to get denatured okay so one part which gets destabilized it assist other parts of the protein to get denatured so that is the cooperative process and that is suggested by this graph right one interesting thing to note over here is that some proteins are there which are exceptionally heat resistant okay so examples are the proteins of thermophilic bacteria and archaea this thermophilic bacteria are the bacteria which are found in the surrounding portion of the volcano which is of very high temperature and at such a high temperature this thermophilic bacteria are surviving okay so our scientists were interested that what is there in this protein that they are stable at such a high temperature so our scientists they had done the structural comparison with the homologous protein which are found in the normal bacteria for example e coli and they found that the structural differs only slightly from those of the homologous proteins which are heat labile so they were surprised by this fact that in this thermophilic bacteria and other bacteria which are occurring at the normal temperature both homologous protein when examined only a minor only a slight difference was there in the structure so how this small difference promote a structural stability at such a high temperature is not yet understood okay and this phenomena is very surprising but it's explanation is not yet available right so now coming to the next point that is the types of denaturation we have mainly two types of denaturation one is reversible denaturation and second one is irreversible denaturation now this word it is self explanatory reversible denaturation means if denaturing agent is removed then denatured protein refolds into original native structure this is called as reversible denaturation example is this hemoglobin this is a protein it can get denatured by the salicylate so if you mix hemoglobin with the salicylate hemoglobin gets denatured 
But if you remove salicylate, then hemoglobin is able to gain its full three-dimensional structure and full functional capacity. So, this is a reversible denaturation. Second example, this is the immunoglobulin or antibody. If you mix it with the urea, immunoglobulin can get denatured. And once you remove the urea, this immunoglobulin regains its original structure and carry out its all the functions fully. The other type of uh, denaturation is irreversible denaturation. Again, this word is also self-explanatory. Proteins once denatured, it remains permanently disordered. For example, from the egg, you can make omelette. Omelette is the example of denatured protein, but from the omelette, you cannot make egg. Okay? So, this is the irreversible type of denaturation. Coming to the next point that is denaturation of ribonuclease A. Now, this denaturation of ribonuclease A is important to understand because it helps us to uncover certain mysteries about protein folding, denaturation and renaturation. This was first demonstrated by Christian and Finsen. Okay, so, let us see denaturation of ribonuclease A. This is the complete three-dimensional structure of the ribonuclease A. This is fully active and in its native state. Here I had shown the disulfide bond with the help of this red lines. Okay, so there are total four disulfide bonds. This is one, two, three, and four disulfide bonds are there. Now to denature this ribonuclease A, we can add urea and mercaptoethanol. What this urea will do? Urea will break all the weak interactions, whereas this mercaptoethanol it will break down all the disulfide bonds, which are covalent variety, right? So, once urea and mercaptoethanol works on this ribonuclease A, we get such denatured ribonuclease A. Now, this denaturation over here, it is a complete loss of biological function. That means, it is 100% denaturation and it is fully unfolded, okay? Now, what happens? Here, we have total 8 SH group, sulfhydryl groups are there. There are possibilities that renaturate, there may be a mismatch in the disulfide bond, but this is not happening and that is so surprising. See, once you remove this urea and mercaptoethanol, what will happen? This ribonuclease A, it will make all the disulfide bond which were originally there. So, it is fully recovered, it is fully renatured, right? Now, why it is getting fully renatured? See, in this denatured structure, there are chances that this 26 number SH group can make up a bond with this 84 number SH group. It can make up a bond with the 72 number SH group, right? But this 26 number SH group is always preferring the SH group of this 84 number, as you can see over here, 26 to 84. And the same is true for the remaining 3 disulfide bond, okay? So, that means this tells us something. This tells us that something is there in this primary sequence only which is helping this protein to give its tertiary structure, right? So, this Christian's experiment, it had proved that the tertiary structure of a globular protein is determined by its amino acid sequence. Nothing more is required other than this primary sequence of this amino acid for determining its three-dimensional structure. And this was a great discovery at that time. Okay. But here, once again, one very important thing is that renaturation is true only for a minority of protein. Remember, renaturation is not a rule. Uh, and ideally speaking, most of the protein never renaturate. Okay. Uh, and you consider this ribonuclease A as an exception. And whatever protein they renatures on itself, many of them are small and inherently stable. Only those kind of proteins are able to renature by itself. Okay? So, that is all for the denaturation. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.